Hello hams and hams to be, Lucas W1BTR here. Today we're taking a look at the all-in-one cable. This is an excellent little device by a person named Simon Cuppers, it's his design. Um, it's a really cool project, it uh, aims to replace the Signalink and Digirig in some really cool ways. Uh, it improves on them and has some weaknesses as well. We're going to look at it all today and uh, how you can get your hands on one, whether you want to do it yourself or buy one. Let's get right into it. Alright folks, so starting off with the AIOC cable here. What does AIOC stand for? It stands for all-in-one cable. So calling it an AIOC cable is kind of like calling an ATM machine an ATM machine. Uh, you're saying cable twice, but uh, I think it it works out fine. Um, so what is this thing? It's, it's a really cool little chip. Uh, it is a sound card, a serial interface, a PTT controller, a virtual PTT controller, more on that later. Um, all in one compact little package here that's really affordable, really compelling little thing. Um, it's made, like I said, by uh, Simon Cuppers. Uh, he goes by uh, Skewep on GitHub. It's S-K-U-E-P. Funny little thing here, too. He's not a ham. Uh, he made this uh, for ham radios, and it's a really cool product, and he did a really great job, but he actually isn't licensed. He doesn't have his experience with ham radio, which is just so funny to me that... Um, I think it requires some outside-of-the-box thinking, so sometimes someone that's outside the community is the person that makes the, the greatest breakthroughs for us, right? That's just a really cool thing. Go on that GitHub and say thanks if you think of it. Um, but yeah, let's talk about what this thing is made of. It's based off of the STM32F302 uh, chip here in the center. Uh, it's over spec for this. If you know what it is, you'll know that. Um, that's on purpose. That's because, like I said, um, it is upgradable firmware. Uh, which is really cool. You can upgrade it um, with a Linux laptop or a DFU util, and um, and yeah. So the, what's really cool about that is that the community can put together their own kind of uh, uh, firmware for it to do their own things. There's been some talk of possibly attempting to um, put a hole out like an APRS kind of thing, just built into the chip, which would be really cool. Um, Speaking of that, there are two different versions of the firmware you can get right off the bat. There is the standard firmware, which uh, has push-to-talk triggered uh, by the COM port, um, or the uh, the TTY port if you're on Linux, um, which is kind of like the Digirig, if you're familiar with that. There's no automatic push-to-talk, but um, you can trigger it that way. Uh, but there's also a different way, which is newer, um, still kind of early access, but uh, it does work really darn well, um, which is kind of more like a signal link, where it's got a virtual push-to-talk I'm um, kind of circuit in there, it detects audio coming in, and it really rapidly triggers that push to talk on there quicker than Vox would work, and uh, some radios don't even have Vox, and it's just plug and play, it works super easy, um, and just really nice to have that feature, I think that's really powerful, because what, a signal link is like, what, $100 now used on eBay? Which is crazy, that's if you can find one, and these things are, are $26.99 for, uh, for this right here, if you get them off my website, or for some, from someone making them I'm making them for you. You can make it yourself for even less if you get them in bulk, and uh, it's a really cool product too. It's not very hard, and uh, yeah. So for the price, that's just so cool. Um, it's designed to be plug and play with a uh, Kenwood jack system, like a UV5R um, or the likes. Um, you know, a lot of those great radios have that connector. You just plug it in. You plug this USB-C port into your computer, and you're after the races. And guess what? No crazy drivers, no um, hunting for those uh, darn prolific drivers that never seem to work right and seem to break every time Windows updates. If you're on Windows 11, it might not even work at all. Um, but no, but this one right here, you plug it into whatever it is, Windows 10, Windows 11, Linux, it, it just works. It just, you're just ready to go, um, which is so great. You know, some of those uh, prolific uh, uh, USB cables cost the same as this thing right here, and they don't work well. Never mind the ones that, that do work well with their own custom drivers, those are expensive. Um, and this you can adapt to any sort of radio, and, it, and it's really cool, it's open source, uh, the pinout is ready to, to make your own connector for, um, it's just super cool. I use this as programming uh, as a programming cable for all of my radios now, all of the ones that have this Kenwood jack, uh, it just works great. Um, and just, just as a cable alone, this is a good value, a great chip uh, for a programming cable. But then it also has a sound card, it also has push to talk. Um, it also has virtual push-to-talk if you use that firmware. That's so cool. That's so cool. And uh, for the price, you really can't beat that. And yeah, like I said, that firmware is user upgradable. You can easily flash that firmware to change between the Vox one or the uh, the manual COM port kind of push-to-talk. Um, you can do that just with any Linux laptop with a with a single command in that file, and it's just really easy. Uh, so that's that's really great to see. And 
a really powerful little chip. Uh, let's talk about the the audio itself. It's it's mono in and mono out. Uh, it's not it's not a, a dual channel, but uh, it, it that does work really well, and uh, it's got a large uh, range of bit rates that it can work at. Um, it will support uh, you know it will support uh, 4800 sorry 48,000 hertz as its default. Uh, that's what it's preferred, and that works great. It supports 32, uh, 32,000, 24,000, and then also uh, 22,050. That's what uh, APRS Droid uses, right? Um, technically, because it's an 8 megahertz chip, it's actually running at uh, 22,000, I think, 54 hertz? No, 52. 22,052 hertz. That's only 90 ppm of error. Um, it's really negligible. It's going to work fine. Um, but one little note on that later, as far as weaknesses of this for APRS Droid, it does usually work great, but there are some exceptions there. Um, it's got support for 16,000, 12,000, 11,000, 25. Again, it's a little bit off because it's an 8 megahertz chip, and um, uh, or crystal, whatever you want to call it, and then 8,000 hertz as well. So it's it's ready to go, plug and play with, with most of your devices there. Um, yeah, super cool. I love this thing. So let's talk about some of the weaknesses here. Like I mentioned, it, it does work as a programming cable. It does work for cat control and stuff like that. Um, it's got a uh, pin for RX, a pin for TX, and a pin for ground for that serial connection. If you're familiar with serial, you'll also know that there's um, that's that's called full duplex communication. There's also uh, half duplex communication, where the receive and the transmit are actually on the same cable. It's shorted together. Um, and it kind of takes turns doing that. It doesn't work with that right now. If your radio, uh, you could check your pin out for your radio. If the RX data and TX data um, are on the same pin, then this won't work for the cat control or the programming. Um, I think that's a bug. I'm not sure. That might be something that can be fixed with uh, firmware in the future. I'm talking with with, uh, with Simon about it, and we are, we are talking about that and seeing if there is a fix. Got a few different ideas there. One other thing to note is that um, as of right now, there's one other bug where if you are using cat control to say um, control like the frequency of the radio with like FL rig or something like that, um, the the voltage across the push to talk drops down from 3.3 volts to 1.5, I think, or so. Um, so it's not actually triggering push to talk, but that voltage drop will trigger push to talk on most radios. So your radio is going to be constantly transmitting uh, and, and clicking that um, that PTT. So you don't really want to use both at the same time uh, for right now, but uh, that's fine if you're doing something like chirp programming, that's not an issue, or if you're just changing something real quickly, that's fine. Um, for example, I've got this working with my Yesu radio. Now you might be thinking, Lucas, uh, this is a Kenwood jack that doesn't work with Yesu. That's what's so cool about this. Um, the pinout, it's all open source. Uh, you can get these like this, and you can just make your own cable. Um, it's super straightforward to do, and these are great open soldering pads. Um, it's not near anything that's too heat sensitive, so you're, you're good. Just just don't tap the uh, the chip here with your soldering iron with solder on it because these are all going to short together and you're going to have yourself a little paperweight. Um, and I definitely did that a couple of times, so um, bless and learn on that one. But yeah, and I'm also thinking, this is one thing I wanted to ask you guys about actually. I do sell these on my website. I sell them like this, the bare PCB. I also sell them put together. And for both of these, the firmware is all flashed. It's ready to go. And... Uh, I've been thinking about possibly selling cables that go on here that adapt to some common radios, those Yesus, those Icoms, um, stuff like that. If that's something you're interested in, let me know because I, I can make those, I can sell them. It's a bit more time consuming, so the the, the price is going to be around the same as getting one of these chips themselves, but that's because these are super easy for me to just uh, churn out and get in bulk because um, I discount there. But if you're interested in that, let me know because uh, that is something I've been thinking about doing and it might bring it more on par with the DigiRig because you don't have to make your own cable. But but yeah, I mean, again, that's that that uh, the fact that the push to talk gets triggered is, sure, it's a downside, but again, think about the competition here. Um, uh, while the DigiRig, you know, it, it doesn't have that issue, it also doesn't have that virtual push to talk. Um, right, and it's more expensive than this. The signal link can't do any serial communication. So, you know, for, for most use cases, uh, this this works great. And it might even end up being cheaper still to just get a second one of these for your digital. And then you're, it's also plug and play and replaceable and, uh, again, open source, and you can do it yourself, and it just works. So cool. So, why don't we take a look at this thing in action here? So I've got this plugged into my computer. So I'm going to plug in this USB-C cable right here. There we go. You can see it's got its little green RX and red TX light right there. Um, super great. We're going to grab here um, 
Well, for the sake of the video, let's grab one of these Quan Chang UVK5 radios. All right, so we got the UVK5. Let's just go to 144390 here. We're gonna grab this end, put it right in here. All right. And uh, yeah, it, guess what? That's all you gotta do, it's ready. This is ready to go for APRS on your computer. Um, if you wanna do APRS to it, you can plug a uh, uh, double-sided USB-C cable in. Um, one thing to note here, as far as the USB cable goes, notice I'm using a right-angled uh, USB cable right there. That's kind of important. You'll notice that this thing is pointing up right next to the antenna. If you're using this with an HT that has the just the standard antenna on there, you're gonna wanna do that, otherwise the cable coming up it's just enough for it to pick up that RF and make the chip kind of misbehave a little bit or possibly make your phone misbehave a little bit. So these right angle adapters um, are really, really helpful for that. And if you've got an external antenna or your own radio with something else um, entirely, some other setup that you're making your own cable for, really doesn't matter. Um, you can, you know, there's no antenna right there, so then you're good to go. But um, it, it's great here. Let's let's show off um, the Chirp program real quickly here. I'm just gonna do, open up Chirp. Select the radio. All right, Quan Chang UVK5. There we go. It just shows up, no driver messing around or anything. Okay. And there we go, it's working. You can see the little green light flashing right there. This radio in particular doesn't do much when you're when you're downloading it, but it, but it is working. And let me just upload it back to the radio here. Hit OK. We're going to upload it. You can see it's transmitting and receiving here into the radio. And then we should see it restart once it's done with that. Almost done. There it goes. Yeah, that's it. Super cool. Um, let me connect it to my phone here so you can see uh, APRS Droid working in action, shall we? All right. I'm going to actually switch over to this uh, GA510. Again, a radio I did a review on. Um, so check out that video if you haven't seen it. It's a really cool radio. And I'm using it because it's got this BNC connector on the top here, this adapter. Um, and that means I can just plug my external antenna in right here. Because I am not using a red angle um, piece for this. Click that in there. I'm recording with my phone. I have made a fatal mistake. Uh, <laughs> well, I can promise it does work. Let's, uh, here's what we're going to do. We will use this with, uh, let's see, we'll use this with APRS on my computer here. Uh, VFO, 144, 390, that's one four four three nine zero. There we go. Nope. One four four three nine zero. All right. Okay. Let's see if I can't get this to stay up for this uh, recording. I'm having a hard time with that. If that's okay. Okay. We're gonna open up Pinpoint APRS. That's my go-to software here for APRS these days. Um, and of course, using Direwolf as the back end. All right, yeah, we've got AIOC selected for both the input and the output. So it's ready to go. Let's make sure our volume is up high enough that it's gonna receive it. Let's start out by just uh, sending our position out. You can see it's transmitting. There we go. Signal one out. Beautiful. And already we're seeing W1MRA. We're seeing K1RDD. Fantastic. It's working. And let me just preface this by saying this was not set up for this radio. That, that took me that much time to set up. I'm going to leave all that in the video just so you can see that that's how quick it was. There's no fancy, um, you know, which COM port is it and all that jazz. You know, you can do that, but it it just works. It's great. There we go. WMRA. That one came through. 
so yeah, that's pretty much it here for the AIOCs. Um, you know, there's some cool other ideas you can do with it. You can get some heat tra uh, some heat shrink, and make your own kind of hard case for it, because while I think they're working on it, there's no 3D printed case for these things yet, although they're pretty durable. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. Do you think that this is going to be replacing the DigiRig and the SignalLink? Do you think that there's some uh, some strengths that those have or some weaknesses that this has that I didn't catch in this video that you want me to uh, to know about? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I do read them. I do reply. Um, if you like this video, feel free to give a like and uh, do hit that subscribe button because it really helps us out. We're trying to get to a thousand subs here and uh, you can help us out in that journey there. Um, but yeah, like I said, let me know your thoughts. Uh, let me know what you think about this. Have you tried one? Um, have you had any issues with it? Let me know. I'd love to hear it and uh, we will catch you guys on that next video.